Hi and welcome from Singapore. It's the first time that I'm actually in a tropical place and my goal will be to take pictures with my R5 and the 100 to 500. So a rather dark lens in a dark place. Let's see how this turns out. I want to give you some tips uh, about techniques and settings that I use to still get a nice image quality, trying to get the best background blur and so on. And then I also want to tell you a bit about the real reason I'm here, because I'm actually not here for photography. I'm here for my other work. I'm also a biologist. Our goal is basically to get as many insights as possible about the biodiversity of a rainforest without physically entering the place where we observe the animals or plants. So we use quite some new techniques and methods. And yeah, I want to talk a bit about this, but mostly, of course, about photography. So amazing just standing here in this forest. I'm just not used to these huge trees, to so many sounds around me. That's not something I know from Central Europe. And it's a bit exhausting as you can see, I'm already sweating like hell, but it's just amazing. And um, this is actually not the national park, it's a more local park, a smaller park. And the nice thing is that the animals here are a bit more used to people, I would say. Um, I got this, uh, this location from somebody I met in Singapore a few days ago, who yeah, recognized me from my videos and we started chatting. So thanks for the location and I'm really sorry that I forgot your name. I have a terrible memory. So I will now go around, uh, look a bit out for birds or monkeys that I can find. And I'm a bit limited sometimes with the 100 to 500 because 500 millimeter is not super long. And almost the bigger problem is f7.1. Can you even get a nice background here? And I think, yes, it's possible, but it's not so easy. So usually it works better if you have a, like a big magnification. So uh, this means you have a rather close shooting distance at 500 millimeter. So g let's give me an example. If you have a small bird, a songbird, this may be this big. Uh, maybe you need to take it from three or four meters distance with 500 millimeters. The background is usually not a big issue. If you have a monkey that is maybe half a meter long with the tail or even longer, um, then if you're also at three meters, maybe you need to take it at 100 millimeters or you need to step back, take it from like 20 meters with 500 millimeter and then the background will be much more distracting. Another thing if you have rather small subjects and you are rather close is that a small movement of yourself to the left, to the right, up and down can make a huge difference of how the background looks because it changes physically quite a lot. Um, so this helps a lot to just go a bit left or right to have the smoothest background, the cleanest background as possible. I especially have tried to avoid like vertical lines going through the picture. And you can see now the sun is entering. Um, this also usually makes a more contrasty and therefore more distracting background. So I somehow prefer a bit more the shadow, but you can also kind of incorporate the lights and have some flares in the background. Just I would make sure that you don't have like something as bright as the tree bark here in the sun, rather some leaf, maybe a bit in backlit, maybe not the strongest sun at 12, rather like one or two hours after sunrise. And then I think it can help the image to actually pop a bit with these flares in the background. Especially since I only have short time here for photography because I'm mostly busy with my biology job. I take whatever I can get. I don't look too much on the weather. I go out when it's sunny or overcast. So if it's overcast, as I said, the background will be a bit cleaner, maybe slightly more boring. This depends a bit. Um, but the problem is in the rainforest with overcast skies, it can get really dark. And if I really need to use higher ISO, then I usually use DxO Pure or 3 to clean up the images. You can see in this image how well the software handles the noise with still retaining the details. You can try it out for 30 days for free and buy it afterwards with the link below. So I had some situations when I was at the 320th of a second, I was at 12,800 ISO or higher. And of course here the f7.1 can be a bit limiting. On the other hand, this lens has amazing image stabilization and this holds true for most of the new, uh, new mirrorless lenses. So as I know Nikon quite good as well. So if you have even a cheaper one like the 400mm f4.5 or 
Uh, I would also guess the 100 to 400 millimeter. I haven't tried this one yet, but they have so nice image stabilization that I can quite confidently hold an 80th of a second um, at 500 millimeters and have most of the pictures sharp. Of course, this only works if the subject stays still, but most of the birds stay still for a while, then they move, then they stay still again, so then you can use it. And sometimes, if I have some safe shots, I then tend to go a bit lower with my shutter speed, meaning a 50th of a second or something like this, or even a 30th of a second and lowering the ISO, and then just take a burst of shots. As much as I can, maybe it's 20, 30 shots, because I just need one sharp picture, and to be fair, they are deleted quite quickly afterwards, I just picked the sharpest one. And here I would also recommend using the electronic shutter, because the rolling shutter is not an issue if neither you or the subject are moving, and the electronic shutter just doesn't give any shutter shock, which can be really problematic. Um, I would really avoid using the mechanical shutter if you're in a shutter speed range from a 30th to a 125th or even 200th of a second. And I used exactly this technique of starting with a rather safe shutter speed and then slowly lowering the shutter speed and also lowering the ISO. And if you're looking for more tips like this about bird photography, how you can get better and sharper images, then please check out my ebook in the link below. A typical mistake in bird photography, if you're taking pictures in the forest, is that you look up to the canopy where there are the birds and you take pictures up there. The problem is usually the perspective doesn't look good. You shoot from below, you, so you see mostly the belly of the bird. And second, you often have the problem that you have the sky somehow in the background with some really bright flares. Um, this can look nice in some situations, like here I think it works quite well but it can also look rather distracting. So try to get a bird that is on eye level. So I would try to scan a bit more this area. Maybe also see if you found a bird that sits there for a while, if you can change maybe the position. Sometimes the, all the ground is not completely flat, but a bit hilly. So you can go to a higher perspective to a higher point to get this perspective that you want and therefore also get the background that you want. But obviously not all birds occur in the forest. Some are more ground dwelling and look for food in meadows. And here local parks can be really nice because as I said, they are more used to people. I would watch out that I don't have a meadow that is freshly cut because it looks a bit artificial in my opinion. If you have one that is already a bit higher, we don't see the fresh cut marks. Then if you go really low, again for getting this nice shooting angle, you can really blur the background nicely. And in my opinion, if you look at this here, you don't see actually that it was taken in a park. And you can get some quite nice pictures. Just watch out of the background that you have also some trees in the background or some, uh, some more meadow. Just avoid having people in the background because you can see the legs as these vertical structures, no buildings, no bikes and so on. So you might need to adjust yourself a bit. Here uh, overcast day gives you a bit more flexibility because you can kind of shoot from all directions without needing to think of the light. You can really focus on the pose of the bird um, and on the background. What do I mean with the pose of the bird? Well, usually I want to capture it either from the side or when it's looking more towards me, but not if it's looking away. This looks mostly just boring. We don't have eye contact and so on. So I often observe first in which direction is the bird moving and then go around with a safe distance and wait there for the bird to approach me. Most birds, if you approach them directly, um, especially the one that are on the ground, I'm not talking the one that sit on the branch, but the one that are on the ground moving a bit around. If you approach them directly, often they just turn around and go the other way and look for food there. That's not what we want in the picture and it might also disturb the birds more. As I mentioned before, I'm not really here for photography. This is also why I only brought my 100 to 500 and not my 600 mm f4. Um, I'm here for an international competition in the rainforest. It's called XPRIZE Rainforest. And the goal is to get insights of biodiversity of the rainforests to better understand and protect them. So we're a team mainly from ETH Zurich, but also some other universities involved. And we use like different approaches and different technologies to get an insight of how many species are in a certain region of the rainforest. Now, the tricky thing is about the competition, you're not allowed to enter this region of the rainforest. So we need to stay a bit outside and we can use technology that we want to, within 24 hours, get in, uh, samples back from the rainforest. And they should also be not too invasive so that, again, the traditional method is somebody goes in, maybe if the forest is really dense, you need to cut down some vegetation and this and that. 
takes time, it destroys part of the forest, so we want to avoid this. So what we use is some different methods like a ground-based rover, several drones and so on for sampling, um, taking pictures and identifying the plants by, by photos visually, um, taking like sound recordings, this works very well for the birds but also from insects or for some uh, amphibians. And then we also use so-called environmental DNA or eDNA, meaning we can filter air or surfaces or water, um, again with drones, robots, whatever, um, and then analyze these samples and then find tiny pieces of DNA fragments and we can then assign them to different species and know which species occur there. So it's a bit comparable to what police, policemen do at a crime scene, just we don't go for individual people, we go for species. So in Singapore here we have the semi-finals. In fact, our team just finished the sampling period yesterday, so this is why today is my day off. And we will see if we manage it to the finals or not. Uh, if you are interested for more of this biodiversity research, I put the official links of our team and XPRIZE below. Let's go back to photography. Um, something a bit tricky in the rainforest is the climate. And I'm not talking about my sweat here. It's about the camera, how the camera is handling this moist air. The problem is usually if you come from a room that had the AC on and is dry and cold and you come to this moist climate, um, the lens will like have a fog on it, uh, some water, I don't know the English term, the water is condensating, meaning you will just see a foggy picture if you look through the viewfinder. So the best is obviously to already store it overnight, not in the AC room, but my balcony, uh, my, my hotel room didn't have a balcony or something. So what I usually do is when, as soon as I leave the hotel room, ideally I open the bag a bit, let it wait for a bit and then take the camera out. Or if that's not possible, I just take out the camera directly as soon as I arrive at the location, because it will take time. Sometimes it was 15 minutes, sometimes 30 or 40 minutes until the lens was clear. And the problem can also be that they condensate inside. So using a microfiber cloth to kind of clean the surface of the lens might not be enough. So just do this as soon as you get out of the car and don't wait until you find the first bird to take it out of the of your backpack. Um, maybe if possible also don't put the AC to 19 degrees in your room. If you put it at 24 or so of course this helps for not having such a huge difference. At least I would think so. If you look around me you can see there are so many branches, leaves and with the sunlight also high contrast scenes. So if we just engage animal auto, eye autofocus, it might have problems to find the bird. At least this was the case for me. So what usually helped was engaging uh, with a single point or spot autofocus, put this on the bird. And then once the focus is there, it worked usually quite fine switching to the animal eye detection. Or otherwise I just left it at the spot autofocus and just moved the autofocus point around with the joystick as we did it in the old days. That's all I have to say for today. If you're interested for more tips, as I mentioned, check out my ebook and I will show you now a few more pictures and videos from the rainforest. Mm -hmm.